I think there comes a point in every girl's life where they kind of just go <laughs> and I don't want to chalk it up to teenage rebellion though that could play a little into that but a lot of the time it's just girls getting sick of I am so much happier now that I'm dead now we meet the ultimate queen the savior the goddess the universe's gorgeous most brilliant gift to mankind Amy Elliot Dunn I remember watching Gone Girl in my first year of university and thinking, huh, I actually agree with Amy. I mean, sure, she was a tad bit extreme at times. It looks like I tied Amy to my bed. And but at the same time, who cares about Nick Dunn? Gone Girl is Julian Flynn's third mystery novel, released in 2012. It was then adapted into a movie that aired in 2014. Since then, it has gained an extreme cult following, with almost half of the women's population able to recite the cool girl monologue on cue. But here's the thing about Gone Girl, and here's the reason so many women latch on to it, and well, simultaneously latch on to Amy Dunn. The world is super misogynistic. Before I begin this segment, we're going to have to talk about male power fantasies. Male power fantasies often lean into sexual, sadistic, and misogynistic fantasies which are tailor-fit to a stereotypical man's ego and impulses. Some examples of male power fantasies include, um, what's-his-face. You can argue that Amy Dunn is a what's-his-face for female characters because she is, like it or not, an extremely violent fantasy for women. You see, viewers live vicariously through power fantasies. They do the things you can't do because of societal norms and basic common sense. So it is perfectly justified that the average woman living in a world of... Women would want to retaliate. And that's exactly what Amy Dunn did. She retaliated. Her psychosis was, I guess, self-defense. I'm going with that, I'm going with that. Amy Dunn is also super interesting because, well, she's a fantasy women relate to. She's a woman who got her revenge, succeeded, and basically won the hashtag marriage game, all of which, of course, would not have been possible without the people who failed her. Her dad, Nick. Her mom, Nick. Jesse Collins, Nick. She worked hard for genuine approval, and they never saw her as a human. Her parents write books of the perfect Amy, aka Amy Dunn's Tethered. Desi Collins tries to make her less than who she wants to be. Nick is a lazy cheater bloke who screws his younger students after Amy no longer plays into his perfect fantasy. People both expected too much and too little from her. This conundrum is literally the Madonna whore complex. And then eventually she just kinda snaps and starts being who she is and wants to be and hashtag lives her own truth. I mean, that's the point of the entire cool girl monologue. She's done subscribing to life's misogynist and sexist standards of womanhood. She's done. Donezo. Never gonna go back. In fact, she's gonna fight back in her own psycho way and that makes her cool. Hey. But the thing is, in real life, women can't afford to snap. Women are constantly demonized, condescended, and punished whenever emotion slips past the rocks of their rock-hard exterior. So the only viable option to self-destructing is just living with microaggressions and misogyny, which, you know, we do really well. Also, murder is actually really hard to get away with. In this world, men have this annoying tendency of getting away with whatever they want to. In fact, I have compiled a slideshow of famous men who are still being embraced to this day despite being known as, well, misogynist shirtbags. So when Gone Girl presents this reality where bad men get to suffer because of their bad actions and women don't suffer because of their bad actions, it's pretty amazing. I mean, sure, yeah, destroy the system and not reverse it, plus, 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 intersectional race and gender politics, but at the same time, do you understand how rare it is to see a man not be excused for his misogyny? And not just any men. These are the men most women have met and dealt with on a daily basis. Nick Dunn and Desi Collins are both straight trash. I mean, we saw Nick's point of view. He is a trash and a half who lost his job and uprooted Amy's life without so much as asking her if it was okay. 
And as for Desi Collins, let's just say the man holds on to his sweetheart he had years back not seeing her as a person. So yeah, I will cheer when I see those two squirm at the hands of the queen. Because let us face it, while they don't deserve the severity of their consequences, they sure as hell deserve to be called out for their internalized sexist bullshit. Okay, before anyone else comments down below, I feel the need to clarify even if I don't really have to, you know. That this video is not a call to castrate your boyfriends, rather it is an explanation of this phenomenon that took women by storm. But ladies, you don't need to hear that, you know, you know that. My final word is to the boys out there. To any man listening out there who may be concerned of their well-being because their girlfriend sometimes plays the cool girl speech on loop, I'm gonna leave you with this. Women deal with so much on a daily basis. Violence is a part of life introduced early to us. And we'd appreciate it if you gave us this two hour form of escapism through the savior, Amy Elliott Duff. Also, if you're worried about being a victim of sexual violence because of a movie, welcome to a woman's world. Hey guys, it's your girl Ika. Thank you for listening to. My second video essay, wow, two in a row. I am on a roll and I am not lazy. If you like this video essay, be sure to leave a like below, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on all social media at the Leon Eco with two A's. I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody!